New York Comic Con has a very special place in my heart. Every year I look forward to Comic Con. The community is awesome. People are super friendly. It's like you can just be yourself. It's very exciting to see other people. It's, it's really, really special. Fun. I mean, I feel like we kind of speak a it, it, it took a while before here. I realized that I wasn't alone in the world. It's a hundred worlds in one. It's just home. How you doing? How's it going? Hey guys. Hey. Welcome. Yeah, we'll start recording. Okay. My name's Burke Sharpless, and this is Matt Sazamo, and we're the creator, executive producers of uh, uh, Lost in Space. I don't know if you've heard of that show. <laughs> yeah, we just kind You're of like, made what? It. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> we all have was that was the <laughs> 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 I think one. I think one of the biggest things for this show is that um, visually, um, the aesthetics is just amazing. Um, it's it's kind of funny too. First 4K TV I bought, and the first show I watched was Lost in Space because it just really, really jumps out at you. Um, it seems like the production is unlike anything else that Netflix even has on Slate. It's just visually amazing. Um, at, when you talk about all the space movies that's been out and everything they've done, how do you guys feel like this show fares with all of them? We're talking Gravity, we're talking First Man, stuff like that. Well, the, 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 the fact that you're talking about our television show in the same breath as a bunch of these that's feature films and First Man. is amazing, uh, first of all. But yeah, I, mean, I, I look at our, our show and I'm, I can't believe what I'm seeing half the time. I gotta, I gotta say, uh, we call him the Fifth Beatle. Uh, Jabbar Rasani is our visual effects supervisor. He works with uh, Taryn Pratt as the visual effects producer. And these guys are incredible filmmakers. Uh, Jabbar also uh, directed episode eight of this year. Uh, we can't say enough about the visual effects guys, and they're they're they're, they're true filmmakers. We're we, we, you know we have crazy ideas. That's our job, but they they make it happen. It's better than anything that we can imagine. From the very beginning, when we did season one, and then we moved into this, I think one of the things that we wanted to do was why we were attracted to this show was so that we could put things on TV nobody had ever seen before. So we almost try to think of the craziest thing that we can. Like you guys, did you guys were in the audience? Did you see the teaser? No, any of the footage there's no. some footage where well, you got to see it of like the Jupiter gets turned into a sailboat and it's going cresting giant waves across an alien sea and we were like we want to do that for the first episode and like the, when they just saw it people lost their minds like in the and and then we have this team that tries to put together this production we design the whole production around these set pieces I mean, we, we, we sold the show as we're going to make like a feature film on TV. We didn't think we would actually do it. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> it's like so crazy that we, we actually got away with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somehow. All right, can we talk about that uh, last scene? Um, you, you took them from the frying pan and dropped them right into the fire. What, what the heck? I mean... <laughs> Where the two robots are fighting inside the Jupiter at the end of the thing. Well, and the, the, oh, just, the, the five just, planet system. Just the fact system. that they just yeah. jump yeah. and it's oh, like, yeah. and it's like, oh, now you're in complete like, enemy kind of territory. territory. So uh, where where are we going from here? From there. Uh, well, season one we kind of designed as a survival story, sort of like it was like uh, Jack London or uh, the you know Swiss Family Robinson in space. And we kept throwing like difficult things at the family, you know, sort of like, you know, there was rain, there was tar pits. But in season two, you're going to see a much more skillful, like battle hardened, like survival group of people. Like the Robinsons have come together and become better. But we've taken them to a harder place, a place with a different and much like more powerful, like sort of set of like an enemy. It's more difficult. And the other thing is, is that the first season, again, was sort of a survival story. The second season is kind of a quest. And you see that in the teaser where you have like the, the desire for like Will to find his robot again, like drives them in a much, a much more, I think, an incredible dramatic direction. Uh, speaking of the actor, the young actor who plays Will, he's amazing. Um, yes, he what is. What a great! How did you? How did you find him? Yeah, um, Ma no, Maxwell Jenkins, you know, is is, is Will Robinson. We, you know, we, casting. We have a great casting director, John Pepsidera. 
and we just looked at tape after tape after tape, and we said, you know, he's got to you know, be Will Robinson, but also, you know, feel real and not necessarily, you know, no offense to Disney, but some, you know, we wanted to, you know, feel real, and we looked at so many tapes, and it was no, 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 and then. There was a little, you know, 11 year old Max Jenkins. I can't believe how big he is now. And, you know, we watched his uh, his his audition tape, and like he was kind of like tearing up because he was like lost, and like we were all tearing up. <laughs> and uh, that's how we, we found him. And we, we, we were so lucky that we did because, you know, in a lot of ways, Will and the robot is like is the, the sort of the beating heart of the show. And if that, that didn't work out, kind of nothing was going to work out. So when you were while you all go were going through casting initially, were you thinking to yourself like, hey, we need like a, a sort of a specific role, or like you know how how I guess how specific were you guys with what you were looking for, um, and how much I, I guess kind of margin, and how much did you, you really like, well let's let's see what we can find out here and let's explore. We had a really specific version on the page. We could sort of almost see there was a kind of a vulnerability of like what does it kind of look like to meet a young Harry Potter or a young Luke Skywalker or somebody who's at the beginning of a hero's journey who's going to change, like kind of in a sense change the universe. And we wanted to see a combination of vulnerability, having a really big heart, but also not seeming like already confident and strong, like so we could see the character grow. We had a vision of like three, four years of what we wanted to do. and. It was hard to find that because a lot of young actors like have this confidence and don't necessarily bring the vulnerability. Like partly they'll come like, especially if they come out of certain like schools of acting, they'll be like sort of already there. And with him, it felt like he had so much growing to do, and you wanted to be along for that ride. I, I, I will say, and all, all the characters were very specific on the page, and we found actors who you know embody them beyond any, any of our wildest dreams, with one exception, and that's Parker Posey. Because, yeah, we, you can't imagine because, that. <laughs> because, you know, we, we, we knew our Dr. Smith was you know, we were going to do the gender swap thing and everything else. But um, beyond that, we, it, it, we did write to her strengths, of which there are, there are legion, um, more so than we did anyone else. So she, she was the one actor who really affected kind of what yeah, we were that's doing really in a lot of ways. That's true. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I I love the interpretation of Dr. Smith um, as someone who watched the original uh, <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, this was very different. I mean, she's really a great character, and um, I don't know. You know what's funny? We is a funny sort of circle of that story. We felt like you could not mimic Jonathan Harris because he had that sort of comedic arch but also lovable quality and when we were trying to de redesign Dr. Smith we didn't feel like we wanted to try to do another Jonathan Harris we didn't want to try to put an actor in that position it was what we kept saying you can't do that again and what's amazing about what Parker did is in her own way and partly because I think she actually like was into and cognizant of that character growing up she's spoken of it many times oh yeah she, she, she literally yeah. grew up a huge fan of Lost in Space specifically Dr. Smith and you can't make this up and so what's amazing so. is she channeled more more, as Matt says, Dr. Smithness, then we almost felt like you could get away with like having a sense of that randomness and archness and even like the, the bits of humor that, that come out of what Parker can do. She's so funny. She's funnier in season two, by the way. She's so <laughs> funny. And it's just like, let let it happen. And I think when we were thinking of the characters, like, well, you can't do that. We're going to make it more of a villain. We're going to play it more straight. And then she showed up and did things and was like, you know what? She can really do it and just let it go. Yeah. Was there anything that like really surprised you about having to come back in season two and having to like like recreate the world again? Um, well, it's part of it was we actually couldn't recreate the world because it was like, well, now what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, everyone's been to the planet of uh, Vancouver Forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thank God, because season two does not look that way. Yet. We're like, well, all right, we're not filming outdoors anymore here, which is why we ended up uh, filming in Iceland this season. We went to the uh, uh, the Badlands of Alberta to film some stuff. 
and you know, built a bunch of bunch of new sets. So I, I think it would one of the hardest things was trying to outdo ourselves from last season and say, all right, if people like the show, we want to give them that again. It's got to be bigger. It's got to be more. You know, we got to keep you know feeding feeding the fan monster. And you know what's funny? In season one, we almost held back on purpose because we didn't want the show to feel to sci-fi, which is a funny thing to say. We wanted it to be like a family action adventure first, so we like purposely kept the environments more naturalistic. Like we really leaned into, you'd see in the background something that was kind of like cosmic, yeah. but like up close it was like trees and we wanted to keep it really relatable. In season two we're like, okay, we've done that. It looks much bigger, much more um, awesomely fantastic. Like season two we said, let's just feel a Star Wars feeling. Let's just let Star Wars happen. Because that just show wanted to go in that direction. And so you you're going to feel like a bigger, like almost Lucasfilm sense of scale and like and like the, co like the sense of cosmic backgrounds. Um, can you talk a little bit about the character of Judy? Uh, she's very different than the original, uh, which I love. Um, can you talk about how you decided to take her in the direction of being this, like, a very independent, strong, um, med student, like, doctor, you know, like, tell us about that. You're speaking to the right people, because we're like, she's like a fan favorite of the two of us as writers. <laughs> she's like, great. By the way, this season, episode five, just saying, okay. All right. it, is, it is a love letter to, her, to Taylor. The quality of her performance. Um, her gifts as an actress. Yeah, I mean, we're jumping around. <laughs> One of the things that in that particular episode is she, it's... It's both, um, it could be physical performance, because she's, you know, she's a great physical performer. She looks great doing do action. action. Uh, but also, it's like, it's, it's, it's maybe like the emotion, the most emotional episode of the season, perhaps. So you just see like the full range of, of, of what this incredible woman can do. Um, but to your point, one of the things that when, when Brooke and I were first conceiving of the show, uh, we love the idea of kids you know, like pioneer times, everyone had a job, everyone had to participate, everyone had to do things. So her being a doctor really came out of like a desire to have all the kids have actual skills that were gonna be necessary. And we're like, well, one of the most important things that you need in a survival show or to be in space is to, is to have medical training. And we're like, instead of giving that to like the mom or the dad, maybe, maybe we should give it to like the oldest daughter. And to play that out of, of what happens when you're, you know, you're 18 years old, you're old enough to have this responsibility, but you're really going to be tested. So that was one of the things we really wanted to do with Judy. Thank you so much. I was wanting to talk to you guys. Oh. We would have talked more. I know. Because I wanted to talk about, like, Come Don. back. Come back. <laughs> yeah. Come, yeah, we're come we're back around. around. Come back around. Come around. Oh, around. They just oh. want to talk about your character. Oh, oh yes. Thank you. Oh, oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, 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 my God. No, I'll come here. Yeah, yeah.